In nature, time and space are relative matters. Perhaps most truly perceived in occasional flashes of insight. Sparked by a magical hour and place. The shore is an ancient world. For as long as there has been an earth and sea, there has been this place of the meeting of land and water. In every curving beach, in every grain of sand, there is the story of the earth. And all through its long history, the shore has been an area of unrest, where waves have broken heavily against the land, where the sea has pressed forward over the continents receded and then returned. East and ahead of the coast of North America, distant from the inner shores of North Carolina, there stands in the open Atlantic a slim and moving line of sand. Visited and possessed by the outer sea, these sands might be the end or the beginning of a world. A slender stretch of sand dunes, sea oats, and salt marsh these are the outer banks, graveyard of the Atlantic, land of lighthouses, wild horses, and legendary storms. Many Outer Banks place names are world renowned Kitty Hawk, Kill Devil Hill, Cape Hatteras. But south of Ocracoke Inlet, there rises a luminous bar of sand almost 60 miles in extent, with no roads, no bridges. Cape Lookout National Seashore, one of the few remaining natural barrier island systems in the world. Remote, windswept, interlaced with earth, sound, and sea. The mainland of the mid-Atlantic seaboard is a vast coastal plain. evidence of the ocean's rise and fall through the long ages of geologic time. On this quiet side of the itinerant continents, the oceanic and continental plates move as one. The table-flat coastal plains are unexpectedly primeval, a country of Pocosin swamps, 
where the plants whisper of the wild and the land sings of the adaptation and evolution. Each time we enter this marginal world, we gain some new awareness of its beauty and its deeper meanings. Sensing that intricate fabric of life by which one creature is linked with another and each with its surroundings. The more clearly we focus our attention on the wonders and realities of the universe about us, the less taste we shall have for destruction. Inside the sheltering arms of the barrier islands lies an inland sea. Huge, shallow estuaries called sounds where fresh water blends with saline, creating a prolific nursery for ocean-going creatures. On warm days, thousands of fiddler crabs parade down below the tide line on the sound side of the islands. objects of their march are diatoms, single-celled algae with silicon skeletons, the base of the marine food chain, and a miracle of rare design. Ringing the estuaries, the salt marsh is one of the most productive ecosystems on Earth, providing a fertile home for the inhabitants of the tide-washed wetlands.
The edges of the lower marshes around Pamlico and Cor Sounds consist primarily of a single plant species, salt marsh cordgrass. Resilient, flexible, able to secrete salt through special glands, cordgrass is a processor and distributor of solar energy upon which the entire estuary depends. Resting a life from the sea has never come without great effort. Salt marsh cordgrass, irrigated by seawater, adapted to withstand coastal storms, has found an ecological niche, willing to bend, but reluctant to break. people of Portsmouth Village showed similar resilience in an ephemeral world of wind and water. When I die, I would like to become part of the salt marsh. Return me to these waters, to the grasses and the tide lands, where there is no such thing as death, only the cycles of life. Make my marker a lush stand of cord grass. Watch it wave in the breeze. See how it catches the light. And think of me. Beyond the estuary lies a slip of moving earth between sound and sea, where the horizons are remote and distant rims on the edge of space. Cape Lookout appears on early maps of the continent as Promontorium Tremendum, the horrible headland. From the Cape, a massive bar of sand extends into the ocean more than 15 miles above and below water. In the days of sail, ships would travel the eastern seaboard by coasting, sailing south on the cold Labrador current, hugging close to the land to avoid the north-flowing Gulf Stream. This area has the highest wave energy along the entire east coast, and sudden storm waves could ground ships on the shoals, or even pitch them completely ashore. No matter how storm-tossed the sea, 
To rescue people on ships in distress, the surfmen of the life-saving stations were duty-bound to go out, though not all would come back. Geologists speak of these islands as if they were living beings, of breathing inlets, of sand as sustenance, of nomadic islands constantly on the move in response to wind and wave, rolling and migrating toward the edge of the continent, the most dynamic geology on Earth. Elevation changes are measured in inches. A stand of beach grass will trap sand and, over time, enable the area to grow into a dune. of the unhurried deliberation of Earth processes that move with infinite leisure, with all eternity at their disposal. The rhythm of breathing begins imperceptibly to match that of the surf. roll in from the open Atlantic. The barrier islands are a difficult place for living things. It is a world of force and change and constant motion, where even the sand acquires some of the fluidity of water. Offshore, the omnipresence of the ocean takes hold. The truths we find in the ocean depths are far stranger than fiction. of the continental shelf, the sea bottom plunges below a thousand feet, with extreme currents rushing over the rugged sea floor. Cold water corals, called Lophelia, exist in a world of darkness beneath the warm Gulf Stream above. Lophelia corals form massive colonies that are thousands, even hundreds of thousands of years old, 
archives of climate change that provide habitat for the anomalous creatures of the deep. The current warming of the planet extends its reach even to these dark and distant recesses of the world's one ocean. Scientists refer to those parts of the Earth where humankind has changed the natural world as the Anthroposphere. The great polar ice sheets are melting. The vast oceans are trending acidic. The Anthroposphere now encompasses the entire planet. From our limited perspective, we think of land, even islands, as permanent. But when Columbus sailed, if he had come north along the Carolina coast, he would not have found the Outer Banks. Most were not islands then, but sandbars, submerged after a rapid rise in sea level. Today, these ribbons of sand are in the midst of another major collapse. Many of the developed islands of the Outer Banks are on the verge of breaking apart. But the wild, undeveloped beaches of Cape Lookout will likely survive, riding the sea wind, rolling further westward into Core Sound, preserving this solitude and sense of antiquity. of earth, sea, and sky are never alone or weary of life. We find reserves of strength that will endure as long as life lasts. There is something infinitely healing in the repeated refrains of the natural world. the assurance that dawn follows night and spring will come after the winter. The continents themselves dissolve and pass down into the sea in grain after grain of eroded land. In its mysterious past, the sea encompasses all the dim origins of life and receives, in the end, the remnants of that same life. For all at last return to the sea, to Oceanus, the ocean river, 
like the ever-flowing stream of time, the beginning and the end. <laughs>